Hey fellow tennis nerds, welcome to this Wimbledon recap of the semi-finals, both men and women. Let's start with the women. Ash Barty played Angelique Kerber. I had Barty to win this tournament ahead of the tournament. She has, she's the number one seed, so it's not something I just pull out of my hat. It makes sense, this prediction. She's been playing really well. She likes the grass. She has a kind of all-court game, well-rounded, lots of slice uses the tennis court and, and plays awkward shots for their, her opponents. And she did that to perfection against Kerber. I thought Kerber would have a chance, but Ash, Ash Barty would be too strong. And uh, it was kind of that matchup. Uh, she didn't quite reach the level she can sometimes, Angelique Kerber, but uh, it was a tough match. But Barty played really well and, uh, and won in straight sets, actually. It was a bit surprising to me, 6-3, 7-5 and she should be the favorite in the final on Saturday, that's tomorrow when I record this. Uh, she will be playing Karolina Pliskova, which was a surprise to me. I put my uh, eggs in the basket of uh, Arina Sabalenka, but Sabalenka uh, couldn't quite get it done, although it was a very tight match, some very good serving uh, from both players. Uh, and very good returning from Pliskova. I think Pliskova has really improved her returns and the footwork has looked very good this um, Wimbledon. She's a tall player, she, she has a very good serve and that's usually what she relies on her, along with the, with the power from the back of the court. But uh, her movement has been a big improvement, I think, if, from what I know. And maybe it's Sasha Bain, her new coach, who has worked with Serena Williams and Naomi Osaka. Uh, he seems to be able to really find something in the player and improve that and make a difference in their game. Uh, and or, or if it's something she's worked on on her own or she's just feeling good about things in general and in good shape. Uh, but she has looked very, very strong this tournament and should be um, definitely a threat to Barty in the final. Uh, she won the match against Sabalenka, topsy-turvy match as I said. She won it 5-7 and 6-4, 6-4. So she was mentally tough stayed the course and, uh, and uh, played uh, a very impressive performance. She's had a, a rough time in, in Grand Slams over the last couple of years, but now she's back and they're both playing their first Wimbledon final on Saturday. And my prediction will be Barty in straight sets, but two very tough sets. Uh, we'll see what happens on Saturday. I will follow up with another Wimbledon recap then. I've also been watching the men's semi-final, two very nice matches. One was a little bit more one-sided than the other. Uh, Matteo Berrettini just rushed out of the blocks, played some impressive tennis, which he has done all week. I predicted him to be a finalist and he's now a finalist. And he started perfectly against Hurkacz. 6-3, 6 love, it was just brilliant. Uh, but Hercac also looked a little bit off his game, maybe was a bit mentally tired or physically tired from, from all his matches before, uh, especially beating Federer, maybe took something out of him. He wasn't 100% there in this match. Uh, but then he kind of fought at least, like kind of a Novak style fight back in the third set. Bertini was still the better player, but Hercac found a way uh, when Bertini dropped his level to win the set. And then I thought the match was somewhat open, although I still had Bertini. But they, and he turned something on. He's been very mentally tough all tournament, a lot of Forza attitude, uh, and uh, he did it well. He came back, took back the baton, and, and held it until the end uh, of the finish line. So uh, he won 6 3, 6 love, 6 7, 6 4. Berrettin has looked very, very good. Will he have a chance in the final? I'm not sure, but uh, hopefully he can make it into a tough match. One player that made it into a really tough match, uh, although the, the you know, sets might look a bit different to you, is Denis Shapovalov. He came out all guns blazing against a uh, pretty, not tired looking, but Novak looked a bit tense. And people had said beforehand that maybe he, he'd be a bit tense because the crowd would be on Shapovalov's side. Uh, they like his game. Uh, many crowds don't like Novak as much as they like Rafa and Roger, we know that. So in Wimbledon, you know, they like uh, the underdog and uh, Chapo got really the, the audience behind him and he came out firing and uh, he had a break. He was serving for the set, playing really well. And then he missed a forehand at 30 all, I think it was. He missed it about this long. Uh, it was a very easy shot. Uh, he shouldn't have missed it. And then Novak got the break. And what Novak does so well is he keep, finds a way all the time 
to win those points that he needs to win. It's just the best competitor tennis has ever seen. Uh, Boris Becker said as much, his ex-coach, that yeah, he is the best competitor. I don't think we can talk about that because he finds a way, despite not playing well, I don't think he played well today. He didn't play so well in the quarterfinal based on his kind of superhuman standards. But he found a way to win and he does that over and over again. That's why it's so hard to beat him because even when you think he's off his game, he's, he doesn't look fresh, he finds a way to turn it on in those key moments and make it difficult for the opponent. And that's what he did. And Shapovalov is not exactly Mr. Clutch either. He has this, uh, you know, very nice game to watch, explosive, powerful. He takes it to the opponent, but mentally gets stressed in these tight moments and, and misses uh, a little bit too much. That's a thing that Novak sees and he pounces on and he, he takes advantage. And he, I had that feeling all along that Shapa would bring it to him, but uh, it would still be a very complicated match for Shapa because Novak will know this weakness and will take advantage of it, which he did. So uh, we have a final between Matteo Berrettini and Novak Djokovic. And uh, yeah, I, I don't think uh, Berrettini has a chance to win against Novak, but I think he, he can make it interesting for a set or two, similar to what Chapo did, but then Novak will find a way to win, as he does, over and over again, and he will get his 20th Grand Slam. And maybe when that discussion of who's the GOAT or, or something like that, he's shown with his competitive spirit and his results that he is the best tennis player of all time. I don't think there's much discussion about that anymore. Not always the most fun tennis to watch, but just super efficient and, and very difficult to beat. And players like Chapo had us a little bit more of a up and down uh, player style. Yeah, they, they can't do it. it. It gets very difficult for them to beat a guy like Novak, who's always turned on in these uh, very important moments of a match. So those are my uh, thoughts. I think we will see Djokovic and Barty as the Wimbledon winners. I will do a recap tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday, recapping the Wimbledon. It's been a great tournament. I must say I've really enjoyed this one. Uh, I've, I've, it's the first Grand Slam. I do daily recaps like this. I hope you enjoy them. Uh, big thanks to all of you who has liked, clicked, shared and commented. I uh, really like doing these, so if there's a crowd for it, I will keep doing them. Maybe do one weekly talking about tennis news also when there are no slams. I think that would be fun. So all your encouragement uh, doesn't go unnoticed. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you need help finding a racket, go to tennisner.net for a racket consultation. And the oh, OPS, uh, last question someone asked. Uh, what racket does Karolina Pliskova use? She uses an older Bablat Pure Drive, a very popular model, as I know, with the power, spin, and, and forgiveness. Uh, but I'm not sure which model. The pros, they use paint jobs, and they paint the rackets to look like the new ones to sell more tennis rackets, but it's their old model that they're used to. Then they have it customized to their liking. Whether it's the grip size, the grip shape, or uh, weight on the racket, or balance, and, and whatnot. Uh, but it's a Wimbledon Pure Drive Light from Bubble Up that she endorses and uh, that's the paint job she's using. Uh, you can find that on Tennis Warehouse. Uh, check out my post on uh, tennisner.net about that. She strings it with a hybrid setup of the RPM Hurricane and Natural Gut, Bubble Up VS Touch Natural Gut. Uh, a nice arm friendly setup that gives you some spin. So uh, if you have arm issues or you want a bit more power and feel from your racket, try a hybrid setup. There are plenty of videos about that on this channel and some written content on tennisner.net. That's all for this one. Have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis.